It's a wild card showdown from the corner of third and King. And the Giants and Cardinals are neck and neck in the race for the playoffs. Tonight marks the beginning of a four game series and fans are in store for an early taste of October baseball. It does not get much better than two story franchises squaring off with a bit of the postseason hanging in the balance. It's the Giants and the Cardinals coming up next. It is mid-September, and at last, the St. Louis Cardinals arrived to AT&T for game one of a huge four-game series against the San Francisco Giants. Dave Fleming on assignment. John Miller on assignment. Dwayne Kuyper's doing radio with our guy Jeremy Affel. So look who's back. Papa's got a brand-new old bag. Greg Pop enjoyed. Uh, glad to be alongside Mike Kruko tonight. We'll enjoy this four-game series, Mikey. And it starts tonight with two of the best right-handers in baseball the last seven to eight years, Johnny Cueto, against Adam Wainwright. It does have the feel of the playoffs, and I think a big reason why is the two guys who were on the hill tonight, Adam Wainwright, the war horse of the Cardinals. I mean, he has resurrected his career after some severe injuries, and he is honed in. If you listen to the Cardinal people and ready for tonight, why wouldn't he be? He's going to take on the Giants and Johnny Cueto. Cueto, 6-8 and eight lifetime against these Cardinals. But, again, Cueto knows the importance of this game. He knows what it means as a first-year player to put that Giants uniform on to pitch and win these big games for this Giants fan base. So here's your opportunity. And for the Giants, it's time to go. Giants saw the Cardinals back at Bush Stadium in early June. They lost two out of three. The one game they won, though, Johnny Cueto beat Adam Wainwright. Should be fun tonight. 24 palm trees outside of 24 Willie Mays Plaza and a showdown with the Giants and Cardinals. We'll check in with Ahmed and Sean back in the CSN Bay Area studios right after this.
on CSN Bay Area is brought to you by Jack in the Box. Taste the all-new Jack's Brewhouse Bacon Burger today at Jack in the Box. Limited time only at participating restaurants. And by Toyota, the full-line automaker with the longest-lasting vehicles in America. Toyota, let's go places. As you can see, it is Italian Heritage Night here at AT&T Park, and there will be movement in the National League wildcard standings. That is a fact as the Giants welcome in the St. Louis Cardinals for a four-game series. Welcome back to our broadcast. I'm Amy Gutierrez. And these two teams, their history rich with drama, spectacular moments. Travis Ishikawa, one of them, as we go back to game five of the 2014 NLCS. It is our greater coverage of baseball. It's brought to you by T-Mobile, and our own John Miller has the call. Here it comes. Swing, and there's a drive deep into right field, way right back there. the pennant and Travis Ishikawa is being clobbered by his teammates as he comes down the third base line and he is mobbed at home plate it's Travis Ishikawa Travis Ishikawa clobbered by his teammates and forever giant with one mighty swing of the bat what drama is going to unfold tonight with the National League wild card on the line we've got Greg Papa in for Dwayne Kuyper Mike Kruko lineups First pitch, Cueto and Wainwright all coming your way. Stay with us. Baseball on CSN Bay Area is brought to you by Jack in the Box. Taste the all-new Jack's Brewhouse Bacon Burger today at Jack in the Box. Limited time only at participating restaurants. And by Toyota, the full-line automaker with the longest-lasting vehicles in America. Toyota, let's go places. As you can see, it is Italian Heritage Night here at AT&T Park, and there will be movement in the National League wildcard standings. That is a fact as the Giants welcome in the St. Louis Cardinals for a four-game series. Welcome back to our broadcast. I'm Amy Gutierrez. And these two teams, their history rich with drama, spectacular moments. Travis Ishikawa, one of them, as we go back to game five of the 2014 NLCS, it is our greater coverage of baseball. It's brought to you by T-Mobile, and our own John Miller has the call. Here it comes. Swing, and there's a drive deep into right field, way right back there. Goodbye! A home run for the game and for the pennant. The Giants have won the pennant, and Travis Ishikawa is being clobbered by his teammates as he comes down the third base line and he is mobbed at home plate. It's Travis Ishikawa. 
Travis Ishikawa clobbered by his teammates and Forever Giant with one mighty swing of the bat. What drama is going to unfold tonight with the National League wild card on the line? We've got Greg Papa in for Dwayne Kuyper, Mike Kruko. Lineups, first pitch, Cueto and Wainwright all coming your way. Stay with us. Giants seven game homestand rolls on looking to bounce back after being swept here by San Diego. First time swept at home since 2010. Happy 78th birthday to Gaylord Perry. Our game time weather presented by the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. The admission free boardwalk is open this weekend. Very nice conditions tonight. 60 degrees at first pitch. A 13 mile an hour wind coming out of the west. Humidity at 80 percent. It is breezy and cool just the way we like it here at AT&T Park. Game one of a huge four game series Mike Matheny and the St. Louis Cardinals at last arriving in San Francisco. Let's check out uh, Matheny's lineup. The Cardinals are 76 and 69 one back of the Giants. Matt Carpenter will lead it off 19 homers on the year. Jed Jerko the former Padre will bat second. Stephen Piscotti from Amador Valley High School out in the East Bay. Brandon Moss will be in left field with 26 homers. Yadier Molina slow first half much better second half. Johnny Peralta will make the start tonight at third base Randall Gritchick in center Colton Wong is back from the minor leagues at second base and it's the great curveball of Adam Wainwright tonight against Johnny Cueto and Buster Posey Mike in game one of this four game series and as we were saying earlier uh, these these could be the, the four biggest uh, dates you got the Dodgers next week Monday Tuesday Wednesday the Dodgers the last three games of the year and they are underway and Arizona's already taken a one nothing lead against Rich Hill. But if the Giants can win three out of the four this weekend, take a three-game lead over St. Louis and win this season series, Mike, it'll set them up to try to make the playoff the last two weeks of the year. Well, and that's the key. It'll set them up. And, uh, you know, they really have really kind of been putting this little surge in September on hold, and everybody's waiting for them to kick it in. And the thing that is significant is that everybody on that field feels there is something there that will kick in. They believe that it's within their abilities to get going to have a big series to take momentum and there's right there for the taking in this Cardinal series but 
the Cardinals are in the almost identical situation. Both teams have a lot to to win. They have a lot to lose in the series. And that's why the atmosphere really is very playoff like the teams both respect each other. The histories are long against both of these teams. And, uh, and it, they really and whoever wins this series is set up to be in this the rest of the way. Tonight Johnny Cueto takes the hill for the Giants and this is what he has done in 29 stars 15 and 5 a 290 ERA Cueto 30 years old he's in his ninth year at the big league level he's 5'11 220 pounder 174 strikeouts against 41 walks and against these Cardinals 6 and 8 lifetime with a 388 ERA and with Cueto when you take your bats against him you're going to see a fastball that goes anywhere from from low to mid 90s depending on the situation he will sink he will cut the fastball he's got a curveball slider and a very good changeup, his best specialty pitch and he'll give it to you all those pitches from an assortment of different wind ups and motions and he knows the St. Louis Cardinals and Matt Cap Carpenter well Mikey pitching in the uh, National League Central all those years with the Cincinnati Reds Carpenter five for 18 lifetime against Johnny Cueto Carpenter with 19 home runs will lead off uh, this Four game series first pitch of the game is called a strike by Doug Eddings. Doug Eddings a low ball guy and a, he's got a pretty big big zone. He's a good pitcher's up. He's joined by Laz Diaz at first Corey Blazer and Brian Onora. Here's the old one to Carpenter and quickly Johnny Cueto jumps ahead 0 and 2. Jed Jerko will hit behind him 26 home runs on the year. The Cardinals Mike very unusual team compared to Cardinals teams past as Johnny quick pitches him and goes one and two they lead the National League in home runs with two hundred and seven on the year Carpenter with twenty eight a year ago is nineteen this year well, they lead the league in home runs but they're having a problem scoring runs right now without the home run it really hasn't been something that they can generate a lot of offense with Quito bouncing the one two and the count is two balls and two strikes. And the Cardinals at home have uh, a record of 33 and 41. Their first losing season in Bush Stadium, three of them. And Mike Matheny takes the Cardinals on the road. They have the best road record in all of Major League Baseball. Hard to figure. They're 43 and 28 away from Bush as Johnny Cueto strikes out Matt Carpenter to open the game. Let's take a look at the Giants defensively behind Cueto, starting in their outfield from left to right. It'll be Pagan, Span, and Pence. Crawford with Nunez who is back in the lineup. That's the left side of the infield panic and Bell on the right side. Buster Posey he'll be in the squad putting down the signs. Going to have Nunez back at third base after missing the entire San Diego series. First it was called lower back tightness and then they acknowledged that it was in the oblique the side area. Here's Jed Jerko taking one to right field. Hunter pants back a few steps with a high backhand. We'll put it away. Two outs. And I think you may see a lot of Cardinals getting after Johnny Cueto early in the count like Jed Jerko just did. Nice opposite field approach by Jerko the former Padre. Likewise for Steven Piscotti. This guy has tremendous opposite field home run 21 homers on the year. First four hitters in their lineup Mike Carpenter 19 homers Jerko 26 homers Piscotti 21 and Brandon Moss back to him the big home run year the former Oakland Day All Star has 26 homers on the year. Johnny gives him the twist on the 0 1 hit right to Brandon Crawford and that'll be a snappy 1 2 3 8 pitch top of the first for Johnny Cueto Angel Pagan leading off tonight then Joe Panic and Buster Posey against Wainwright in the bottom of the first.
Tonight, and Johnny with a 1 2 3 8 pitch top of the inning and now Adam Wainwright will go to work against this lineup for Bruce Bochy and he is going to make a change Spain is in the lineup but he drops down to eighth Angel Pagan will lead off Joe Panic will bat second then Buster Hunter Pence Brandon Belt last six games eight for his last 21 Brandon Crawford Eduardo Nunez back in the lineup and an art span drops from a lead off down to eighth ahead of Johnny Cueto Michael will duel the great curve balling Adam Wainwright. That's right, Adam Wainwright on the hill tonight for the Cardinals. Six foot seven inch, 235 pounder. He's 35 years of age and his 11th year at the big league level. This is what he's done in 29 starts 11 and 8 with a 4.45 ERA. 141 strikeouts and 49 walks. How's he doing? You're going to see a low to mid 90 fastball. More lows now than mids, uh, but that curveball, as uh, Greg stated, it is one of the best in the game. It's right over the top. He also has a slider. And a changeup, he'll throw anything at any time. Lifetime against these Giants, five and six with a 3.06 ERA. Angel Pagan leading off with uh, Span dropping in the order. Angel has good career numbers against Adam Wainwright, 10 for 21 against him, and he takes a strike. Angel tying a career high with the 11 home runs, going back to his days with the Mets. Most he's hit with the Giants. Cardinals are playing him pretty much straight up. And Wainwright jumps ahead 0 and 2. That's the thing about Wainwright that really stands out. I mentioned 6'7, 235, but very compact with his delivery. A very repeatable stroke, and that is saying something for a guy 6'7. It's a lot of height and a lot of tilt on his fastball because of the high release. Look at the wide base and his pitching mechanics. And as Pagan checks the 0 2, and it's one ball and two strikes. He turned 35 years of age, Mike, on uh, August the 30th, and he's kind of. Widening out his base a little bit and throwing a few more fastballs. Let's take a look at our X It's brought to you by your local Toyota dealer. And this is the very upright. And watch how high the release. That gives him the tilt on the curveball. And for a guy 6'7, a, a very repeatable arm stroke. Again, grounds one fair that'll be taken at first base by Matt Carpenter playing a lot of first base this year. All right, let's take a look at the Cardinals defensively playing behind Wainwright tonight starting in their outfield from left to right. It'll be Moss, Grichik, and Piscotti. Good arms with Grichik and Piscotti in center and right. Jericho and Peralta on the left side of the infield. Wong and Carpenter on the right side. And uh, Yadier Molina, well, he'll be in the squad putting down the signs. What a great weekend series to watch. Uh, Yadier Molina, the eight-time gold glover in the National League. And uh, Buster Posey, two of the best catchers in all the baseball. Joe Panic takes ball one. Joe, four for 12 career against Adam Wainwright, moves up in the batting order with Span, dropping down to eight. Full moon. Yes, right it is. Above the quarter sign. You know, a good sign. We could use a full moon around here. Yeah, we? we need something. Something to shake it up. Joe Panic. Colton Wong has great range at second base and he gets there in time to throw out Joe Panic. They were not overshifting there for Panic. That was just all the range of Wong. Two outs. Oh, hit just off the sweet spot up towards the tip of the bat. And second baseman grounds out to another. Colton Wong was actually sent out of the minor leagues early this year after signing a huge contract extension of the spring. Three years over 25 million. He has tremendous range at second base. Here's Buster Posey. Buster just 11 for his last 57. Takes this one to right field. Piscotti will play it out of bounds, and Buster's got a base hit. We talked about the early approach a lot of hitters are going to have against Johnny Cueto. I mean, you can say the same thing here about Adam Wainwright. Both pitchers you don't want to get deep in the count with because they can throw so many different looks at you. And Adam Wainwright. You look at the four pitches that he throws, and he'll use them all. And he'll let that change up fool you. Even though he throws it 2% of the time, he's liable to throw it with the bases loaded and uh, a 3-2 count. But the cutter has really become his best pitch. He has been throwing his fastball, Mike, just a little bit more the last three or four starts. Here's Hunter Pence as he fouls one straight back near us. Just below Jeremy Affelt in the radio booth with Kite tonight. Well, he had his game face on when we saw him in the cafeteria tonight. Affelt has his game face on? Oh, yeah. He was ready to go. 
And you know, that's his game face right there. Making his radio debut tonight. John Miller and Dave Fleming are away for the first two games of the series. So Kaipo run radio with Jeremy and I get to spend a couple of nights with Mike Kruko. Yeah, good to Kruko. see you. Again. Good to see How you. Are you left hander? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a Dick Vitale scout report. It was a good one. Oh, that was fabulous. He was great yesterday. A lot of energy from Mr. Vitale. And Pence drives one to left field and the Giants are on the board right away. Two to nothing. That is exactly what this baseball team needs Mike in light of what happened here against the Padres to begin the homestand a two run homer from Hunter Pence. Well and he does it on a curveball and not many home runs given up by Adam Wainwright on the curveball. And this one's got a little height to it. And Hunter Pence backspins it right out of here takes advantage of the mistake and you knew off the crack of the bat. It wasn't coming back. And I agree with you they needed a shot in the arm. It's exactly what the offense was looking for. Who says the Giants can't hit a curveball? Well, they couldn't Monday against Paul Clemens, and typically, Mike, they don't. But uh, Hunter laid back on that big breaker uh, hanger there, and he smoked it. His 12th of the year. Brandon Belt gets tied up inside. One ball, one strike. Well, I, I think that's where you're likely to see most of your your hanging high breaking balls is early on in the game, before a pitcher finds his rhythm. But I mean that's significant because the Giants just are not a team that has done well in the first inning. No. Especially the second half. So you come into this arena against a team that has just as much riding on it as you do and you take advantage of a mistake like that. That's a big swing for this club. Giants did not have on field batting practice today. Vote said show up late guys didn't get here till about five o'clock and his belt strikes out. But uh, Hunter Pence takes his batting practice right here. A little bye bye baby. Hanging curveball from Adam Wainwright. Pence is 12th of the year. And the Giants, Bochy's happy, have a 2 0 lead here against the Cardinals after one. On CSN Bay Area is brought to you by AAA. What does your insurance do when it's not doing insurance? It should do more. Go to AAA.com for more details. Johnny Cueto now with a 2 0 lead will go to work against Brandon Moss, who pops the first pitch up. Coming in is Denard Span. One pitch, one out in the second inning. Again, aggressive early. You see it all night long. Hey, the Rockies are coming to San Francisco, their final visit of the year, September 27th through the 29th. And Monday, the 27th, is Bay Area Unite Night featuring a Giants Sharks cap. And Tuesday, the 28th, it's African American Heritage Night. Your special event tickets will also get you 
a Monty Irvin bobblehead. Go to sfgiants.com slash tickets and check it out. Got to get the Monty Irvin bobblehead, one of the great Giants of all times who we uh, lost this past offseason. New York Giant, great. Yadier Molina takes a strike from Cueto. Good low ball hitter, Molina. Good bad ball hitter. When I was in uh, Chicago with the Cubs, uh, my second year at the big leagues, they had an old timers game and uh, got to shag balls with Monty Urban really? on the outfield. Mm. Ground ball right to Nunez at third. And we'll throw out Yadier, two away. Let's check in with Amy G. Amy. All right, Greg, as you mentioned, Bruce Bochy giving the team a day off from batting practice. He also shook up that lineup a little bit. He moved Joe Panic up to the two spot, and he moved Denard Spanton down to the eight hole. He said he wanted to give Denard a break, take some pressure off while he tries to find that swing. About it, Denard Spanton said, hey, I'll hit leadoff, I'll hit eighth, I'll hit 20th. I'll do whatever it takes to help my team, guys. All right, Amy. Interesting. Uh Decision by Boach to not have the on-field batting practice. The Cardinals hit at around 5 o'clock, Mike. Now, they, a lot of the Giants individually do hit underneath to get ready for a game, but I think he thought they were grinding a little hard in the San Diego series, so, and they played a little tired at times. Well, when you don't score runs, you, you look tired. You look flat. I mean, that's just, that's how you appear, and I think more so not letting them go up and swing the bat. He wanted them off the field. He didn't want him to be out there standing around. Didn't want him on their legs fielding balls. He just wanted to give him a little rest. Seems to have worked. Hunter Pence with a home run, and the Giants have the early lead. I mean, they're going to get their swings in in the cage, oh. T-work, soft toss, how they normally get prepared. But just get off your legs. One-two pitch. Johnny got caught there on the quick pitch. His cleat caught on the mound. The spike. Luckily, nobody was on base. I watch the left foot as he starts his stride step, catches his heel, and whoop. <laughs> Crowd loves it. Typical play. Well, you know, he's just so relaxed out there. Even in a big game environment, you know, he just looks like he's having the time of his life. And he is not afraid to laugh at himself. Now I'll give you the shake. Now it goes three balls and two strikes to Johnny Peralta starting at uh, third base tonight. Four for 23 against Cueto. Kind of interesting that Matt Adams is not in Mike Matheny's lineup tonight. Matheny uh, electing to go with Peralta at third and Matt Carpenter at first, even though Adams has terrific numbers against Cueto. And Peralta is not hitting and has not hit Johnny. And as I say that, he races one and Brandon Crawford makes a Incredible play. The timing on that leap could not have been better. Well, Gold Glover, you could also say that he's got some hops, and that's all he's got. He could have dumped. Not bad. He timed that beautifully. I think Ozzy Smith is even impressed by that play.
CSN Bay Area is brought to you by PG&E, together building a better California. Freck Papa, Mike Kruko, Amy Gutierrez back at at and t Randy Crawford after that beautifully timed jump to rob Johnny Peralta will lead it off here in the bottom of the second against Adam Wainwright. He takes ball one. It will be Crawford, Nunez, and Span. Batters six, seven, and eight in Bruce Bochy's realigned batting order. I guess the play that Crawford made, we kind of get used to, Mike, but that. The, the, the elevation to get up and the timing on the leap of that uh, jump was just beautiful. Yeah, I see he does that with style too. Makes it look easy. Everything he does, it's got it's got a little flair to it. All right, let's take a look at the hops of Brandon Crawford. Time it. And I mean, there was some heat on that line drive too. It about took his glove into left field. Struck the landing as well. Well. His wife now was a gymnast. Oh, really? So maybe he picked that up from her. Awkward swing there, and it's two balls and two strikes. She then was a a gymnast uh, at UCLA, so I mean, she was she was really good. If you're a Pac-12 athlete, you got some ability. I don't care what sport it is. Without question, and Brandon, of course, played down there at UCLA, from the Foothill High School Falcon out in Pleasanton. High Sox Wainwright took something off again back to back pitches man and he looks all six 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 seven some guys can pull off the high sock look some guys can't Wainwright can pull it off well and he's a, he's a tall six seven when you're hitting off him because of his high release point he's always had the ability to have great command of his pitches and he controls the knee high location but from the angle with which he throws it he gets a lot of tilt and that's always been a, a real strong point of his abilities fastball just missed there's Doug Eddings and Crawford draws the walk. Crawford over at first base. Giants Insider Podcast is sponsored by Max Muscle Sports Nutrition and is live on CSNBayArea.com. Log on each week as Insider Alex Pavlovich talks baseball with players, coaches, special guests, and a whole lot more. The Giants Insider Podcast with Pavs on CSNBayArea.com. Also available. On iTunes, Rich Hill's given up finally some hits and runs. Mike is a Dodger. Diamondbacks have a two nothing lead. Dodgers have a five game lead over the Giants with 17 to play. And of course, they'll reconvene for a three game series starting Monday at Dodger Stadium. Kershaw against Bumgarner. Nunez shoots one up the middle for a base hit. Crawford will stop. Runners at first and second, and nobody out for Denard Span. Yeah, nice to get Nunez back in the lineup. He's missed the last several days. He's had a problem with his lower back and his oblique being very sore in the lineup today. First pitch he sees, he goes right back up the middle. So the Giants start to make some noise here again. So Denard Span in the throws of a deep thump, three for his last 46. Also, he's only just a two for 15 career against. Adam Wainwright so Boach did drop him in the order from leadoff down to eight. But he's up in a, in a key spot here first and second and nobody out. With the pitcher on deck an unlikely bunt situation even though there's runners at first and second nobody out. Although Johnny is an RBI machine. You know what? Your best at bats from Cueto have always come with men on base and in scoring position. No doubt Saturday about that. in Arizona. And he smells an RBI. He can put the ball in play. And he'll pop that out of play. One ball, one strike. Well, on the left is the entire season of Denard Span, and you can see that he's, he's got some good red zone there at the bottom of the strike zone in a way. And since August 30th, he has really hit on hard times and has been stone cold, cannot buy a hit. And it really was unusual because he's a second half guy. He'll tell you he is. And he was having a nice second half until he hit the first of September. And then things have st slowed down for him. It was that road trip. Got a hit in Chicago the first uh, at bat and then went over 30. Wow. 
Wainwright pitching for the strikeout here. Giants looking to put up another crooked number. Hunter Pence with a two run homer in the bottom of the first. And they're set up, as you say, Mike, to go large again here in the bottom of the second. Span takes a strike, and now it's two and two. He's right that cutter hard. Such a great pitch. And that's a pitch that he learned once he got to the big leagues. He showed up, he was just a hard thrower. I mean, a hard thrower with a big over the top curveball. Working with Yadier Molina. Going through the signs again with a runner at second base. Count goes full now. In the 125 year history, Mike, of the St. Louis Cardinals, Yadier Molina has caught more pitches in innings from Adam Wainwright than any catcher pitcher duo in history, even more than Tim McCarver and Bob Gibson. Well, he never seems to take a day off. You see the patches on his chest protector and his glove. They're gold. And as Greg said, eight gold gloves as a catcher. Even the guys that have worked together so long, they want to make sure they got the right sign here with a runner at second base and a 3 2 pitch coming. Well, I don't expect Wainwright to give in here. I mean, I don't think he's just going to lay something out over the middle. I still think he's going to think a corner. I mean, he's thinking that he could get right past Cueto. And I don't even think he is that fearful of losing a base here. I mean, guys have that have strikeout abilities, and they get a little stubborn. Generally speaking, you don't have an open base here with nobody out, or less than two outs, rather. And runners at first and second. Crawford at second, Nunez at first. They are not going. Ground ball to the right side. And Carpenter will get the force out at second base. Nice throw there by Matt Carpenter, longtime second baseman, third baseman playing on the right side. So Crawford at third. Span reaches on the fielder's choice, and Cueto will bat with one out. Oh, really the momentum of the play takes Carpenter to second base and yes, if Nunez goes in standing up it hits him in the back. Yep. Now you of course don't know that when you're on the base pass but that was kind of a, of a, of a risky throw. It wound up being a nice play. Carpenter also Mike did a nice job of just taking that a little bit further to clear the angle where he would not hit Nunez in the back and yeah. he's played a lot of third and a lot of second he looks pretty comfortable over at first. And by getting that out of second now it sets up a bunt situation for Cueto. Johnny Peralta comes in at third. Crawford had to scramble back. Yadier will pick you off no matter what base you're on. He will throw behind you. But Peralta was not on the bag. Well, Molina's fearless back there in regards to how he uses his arm, and he's got a cannon. Pretty cool. He's got the. Uh, Gold on the chest protector, eight time gold glover. He's also won four platinum gloves, which goes to the best overall defender in any position. Johnny gets the bunt down, will go foul. I just think it's a cool thing that separates the gold glovers from the rest of the herd. And there you see the gold patch on the chest protector. He's also got on the back of his glove. Most Bunch. gold gloves against catchers for yeah. Ryan Rodriguez, 13, Johnny Bench, 10, Bob Boone, 7, Sunberg, 6, and Lena. It's a good list, isn't it? Yeah, they all great, great receivers. Players. Fun to watch. You have to wonder, Yadier's numbers are down. He's been throwing the ball better in the second half. The Cardinal pitchers do not hold well. And he had that uh, thumb injury on his catching hand last year that affected him this year. As Cueto bunts that foul. And two. It, Buster Posey, Mike, has been a better defender. Now, Yadier's had a, a better second half and he does have the reputation. It will be interesting to see who wins the gold glove at catcher in the National League this year Buster or Yadier Molina again. Yeah, I think this year is going to be Buster's year. And I think one of the big things is going to be the percentage of, of, of how they throw out would be base Steelers. Posey has been fantastic. And the Cardinal staff just not holding at all. And as Johnny will bunt that foul and he will strike out. And he's not happy. That's the second out. Never really got in good position to bunt. Late getting that bad head out in front of him. So a wasted out. And now it's up to Pagan. 
Giants had first and second and nobody out here in the bottom of the second. Now they have first and third with two outs. You know what? That may work out in their favor because Carpenter at first base has to hold the runner on. That opens up a hole on the right side. And with that big slow curveball that and cutter that Wainwright throws a lot of to lefties, that's a pitch that, that Pagan is likely to pull. So that felt bunt might work out to be in their advantage. And Angel did pull the ball to Carpenter right down the first base line his first time up, so he does have that hole to shoot through. Brandon Crawford opened the inning with a walk after Nunez singled. Bernard Spann grounded out to uh, Carpenter to get the force at second, so he's over at first base. I mean, he has the right to pitch to who he wants to between Pagan and Panic. Angel to center field. Randall Gritchick hardly has to move. So the Giants had first and second and nobody out in the inning and Wainwright pitches out of it. The Giants do not score two nothing Giants after two. on CSN Bay Area is brought to you by the GoPro Grand Prix of Sonoma, Sunday, September 18th at Sonoma Raceway. Get your tickets to the Verizon IndyCar Series season finale at SonomaRaceway.com. Uh, we got to get a couple of those, Mikey. You well, know, you, you certainly do. Here. Italian Heritage Night Beanie. My, my, my head is cold, Mike. Can we get a couple of those? Oh, well, make sure you get one. I got to get one. Me? I'm now, sticking my Kipe, guns. Kipe wants that. That's straight out of Wisconsin. <laughs> This one is driven to left field well struck and Angel Pagan will not get there. Randall Gritchick on the first pitch here at the top of the third will get into second base with a leadoff double. Again, aggressive on the first pitch against Cueto. We've seen it up and down this lineup here the first time through for the Cardinals. And two seam fastball. A little bent arm swing and he goes and gets that belt high locator around the inside corner. That's a nice swing of the bat. Shot right over Pagan said he could hardly react to it. Randall Gritchick, who uh, was sent down to the minor leagues a couple of different times this year, as was Colton Wong. And he is back and he is on a real tear here late in the year. LA Dodgers after leaving Yankee Stadium, taking two out of three here in Arizona. Tonight, and those two franchises have a history of bad blood. And as Wong will pull this one, and it'll move the runner Gritchick to third. Plato covering for the first out. Nicely done by Colton Wong. That'll bring up Adam Wainwright, who was having a tremendous offensive year. Looks like just a real simple play, but this is a tip for kids. If you have a runner at second base, you are the pitcher. Your responsibility to get to first base, and watch how quickly he. Gets set up after he touches first base, plants that right foot, and immediately looks to third to see what the runner at third is doing. 
and that's just great technique. Seems like a simple thing, but it cost the Giants a game on Tuesday night when Hunter Strickland failed to cover first base. And boy, fundamentals, if you are sloppy fundamentally, it's going to come back up and bite you. Check out those numbers for Adam Wainwright. He has 14 RBIs on the year. 11 hits, six have been doubles. This pitcher can swing the bat. Well, I mean, those are numbers right there that win a Silver Slugger award. Last year, Madison Bumgarner, the Silver Slugger Award in the pitching position in the National League. And Wainwright, that's I, a pretty good case right there. Mad Bum's won the last two years, Mike. And I, Jake Arrieta is also having a tremendous offensive year, as is Wainwright. I'm not sure Mad Bum's going to win it this year. He looks like a hitter in the box, doesn't he? You know what? Guys that look like hitters in the box, I mean, number one, they have a, a, a good positioning they're relaxed their hands are high I mean all that looks good but you watch them the way they receive balls with their back leg what type of balance does he have in that back leg that's what makes you look like a hitter and Wainwright has that pops this one up Nunez at third we'll put it away big out there for Johnny Cueto two outs Wainwright threw his bat down in disgust. You have 14 RBIs. I mean, you're thinking this is this is an RBI for me. Runner at third, less than two outs. And it is this time of year where you don't get the job done, and the bat has to pay the price. And here's Matt Carpenter going commando. No batting gloves. Never is one. Got the calluses on both hands. You know, I, I think it's a lot easier for guys just to wear the gloves. Because when you don't wear gloves, you get calluses on your hands, and they require maintenance. Can't let a blister gun underneath the callus. You always have to shave them down. You've got to sand them. You've got to take care of your hands. Plus, in spring training, it takes you a while to develop those calluses. Very few hitters in baseball do it anymore. Connor Gillespie, the Giants, does not wear batting gloves. The Cardinals hitting coach, John Mabry. He did not wear batting gloves when he hit. Madison Bumgarner didn't have any last night. He usually wears one. Bottom hand. He's pitching him. Carpenter takes a strike. Johnny Cueto trying to strain a leadoff double here in the third after the Giants had first and second and nobody out in the bottom of the second and neither scored. 2 nothing Giants on the Hunter Pence first inning home run. Change up away just misses 2 and 1. Shaken off yeah. four times to get the cutter inside. Way inside, three and one. Jed Jerko is on deck. Sets up away again, and that's a strike. I mean, take a pitch like that, Mike, three and one if you're Matt Carpenter. He's probably zoning. Huh? He's looking for something middle in, and he got something middle away. Or he's looking soft. He's looking fastball, he was looking middle in, but if he's looking off speed, which he will do, good hitters will do. And good hitters will also guess in two strike situations. Three two pitch. He walked him and now will face Jerko. Well, Tuesday, September 27th, is Bay Area Unite Night here at AT&T Park. Your special event ticket will get a Giants Sharks teal cap. 
and a ticket to see the Giants take on the Rockies. Go to sfgiants.com slash special events. Hockey. It's back. Training camp, Mikey. What a year the Sharkies had last year all the way to the Stanley Cup Finals. So here's Jerko. He flied out to right, hit the ball hard, but right at Hunter Pence's first time up. Big time power. 26 home runs on the year. Right up the middle of base hit, and that'll bring in the Cardinals' first run. Grichik will score, and the Giant lead is down to two to one. And again, first pitch swinging. Quinn will get it in breaking ball, and he elevates to get in the strike zone to get that advantage. And Jerko says, "That's what I'm looking for. Anything out over the plate and up." So a nice two-out RBI here from Jerko, and the Cardinals are on the board. Carpenter down to second, Jerko at first for Steven Piscotti. He bounced out to Crawford his first time. And home run he has against the Giants against Jeff Samarja back on June the 4th when he shot him right out down the right field line at Bush Stadium. He has tremendous power the other way. Giants bunch of gap in right field and respected that approach. Back one ball, one strike. Kind of hard to believe it's mid-September and the Cardinals come to San Francisco for the very first time all year. It's odd, but it, it's kind of neat though that yeah. both teams really parallel one another as to where they are in the season and how big this this series is. You know, this is a time of year where teams that are assured that they're going to get the playoffs they start to. Taper off how they play guys, how they pitch guys, how they use their pins. The emphasis becomes rest. But that's not the situation in either one of these clubhouses. These teams are pushing hard to get to the playoffs. Runner at second, Buster will go out and talk to uh, Cueto. Mets are off tonight. And the Cardinals are right now the, the closest team to the Giants that are not in the playoffs. Giants have the number one wild card spot. The Mets are a half game back, and the Cardinals are one. Back. So these four games, Mike, are just going to be huge here. You'd like to win three out of four this weekend, and that will also ensure that you win the season series against the Cardinals because St. Louis beat the Giants two out of three uh, back in June at Bush. And that, that could be a head to head tiebreaker. So if it's 2 2 at the end of the weekend, then you got to play the last two weeks. You take three out of four this weekend, though, Mike, you set yourself up to make that at least the wild card spot. You know, and those are things that are really at this point because of where the Giants have been the last several days they're not openly talked about I mean, you, you, you know that as a ball player coming into it but I doubt if it's something that is talked about in the meeting the emphasis right now is get your act together get your your at bats and your confidence as, as an individual together so you can form a rhythm up and down the line something they have not been able to find consistently in the second half. Swing and a miss, two and two to Piscotti. There has to be a stubbornness in a clubhouse that has won three world championships in recent years. When you get to this time of year, that you have to feel deep down that this is your time of year. And they've been looking for an igniter to, to, to just take off the second half, and now it's time. Struck him out. Nicely done by Johnny Cueto. Cardinals do get a run. And the giant lead is down to two to one as we go to the bottom of the third. Panic, Posey and Pence are coming up.
path of the third inning. Time now for our Togo's big play, the Togo's way. We go back to the 2014 NLCS game five. Joe Panic hits a two-run homer off of Adam Wainwright to give the Giants a 3-2 lead in the bottom of the third inning. Panic became the seventh rookie in Giants history to hit a home run in a postseason game. That is your Togo's big play. That was a big home run, Mike. That wasn't the biggest one that night. Later on, Travis Ishikawa with the walk-off against Michael Waka to win the pennants. Wow. <laughs> Mike Matheny's team has been eliminated here in San Francisco in 2012 and in 2014 as Panic takes this one to center. It'll hang up a little bit too high and it'll be caught. Uh, the uh, shortstop Jerko went away. But before the walk-off, by Ishikawa, Michael Morris tied the game off of Nishak. <laughs> uh, and Nishak didn't give up any home runs, it seemed like the whole year. I mean, this is such an unlikely swing of the bat. Right. He went beast mode. Michael Morgan absolutely uh, had his signature on that uh, postseason. The moment he hit it, Mike, he knew it was gone. That yeah. tied the game in the bottom of the eighth. It was huge. People forget that home run. He was great energy for that club. Such a good ad. Mr. Posey did pick up his fifth career hit against Wainwright his first time up when he singled to right field directly ahead of Hunter Pence's two run homer. Posey up the middle. He's two for two tonight. Nice controlled swing. First one he shot to right field. Mike, this one he takes right back up the middle. I think he got a breaking ball too, just out over the middle of the plate. I mean, it helps when he hangs something up there around the belt. Take a look at the location. I mean, that's just a, a mislocation from Wainwright. And I think if you're Wainwright, if the guy just gets a single off that location, you're not, I mean, you're happy. Is that a changeup? He doesn't throw his changeup much. That looks like a changeup. Well, that or a cutter. Hunter Pence homeward on a curveball his first time up. You know, we were talking earlier, Mike, there's a perception out there the Giants do not hit the curveball. And actually, they, they hit it okay. Fastball, good fastball hitting team. Changeup's the pitch that gives them trouble. And they are 238 against the curveball. I would say the changeup gives just about everybody in the big leagues trouble. Pence rifles that one off the end of the bat. Hunter got a hanging curveball his first time up, and he crushed it. He is hot, hottest hitter in the giant lineup right now. Now that hanger you're talking about, breaking ball, it just didn't do anything but hang up there waiting to get hit. And Hunter Pence obliged. Down a couple of strikes now. Trying to bring two seam movement back around that outside corner. Let's think about Wayne Ryan. Mean, he's got five or six types of movement that he can put on a baseball and he can back off speeds and just about everything. He's got really a nice touch, good finesse pitcher. And that's what's made him special. I mean, he's a power arm with finesse. Pence lays off. Long time Cardinal Ace. Twice he's won 20 games in a single season. Twice he's won 19 games. 2009 he finished third in the National League Cy Young Award. Tim Lincecum won it that year. Finished second in 2010. Second in 2013. Third in 2014. AB Hunter from 0-2 to 3-2. Yeah, it seems to me like Wainwright's been using that cutter a lot, especially when he's back into a, a corner where he has to make a pitch. It's not his best velocity, but it's his best movement. And it's a controllable movement. He can put it on a corner on both sides of the plate. So all he's thrown pen so far is cutters and sinkers in this at bat. Comebacker. 
They get one on the first to get Hunter Pence. They actually get the double play. Nice play by Colton Wong to get the out at second base, and then he throws over to first to complete the double play. 2 1 Giants after three. on CSN Bay Area is brought to you by Casino Matrix, Silicon Valley's best bet for gaming, food and fun 24-7. Welcome back to AT&T Park. Rick Papa, Mike Kruko, Amy Gutierrez, Giants and a two-run first inning homer from Hunter Pence. Lead two to one as the Cardinals come to bat here in the top of the fourth. Brandon Moss, Yadier Molina, Johnny Peralta, batters four, five, and six will lead off. Giants go to the overshift in the infield for a, a pull hitter like Brandon Moss. Do play him straight away in the outfield, but in the infield, he will pull ground balls. Wait, he'll miss the location there, but he got a called strike. Pitcher friendly strike. Buster coming in now. Moss flied out to center his first time. Johnny will quick pitch him. Mixed speed, mixed location, mixed movement, and mix the delivery. And, and that's what makes Cueto so unique is that he can throw all those things at you designed to upset your timing. And I'll shake you. Called strike three. Beautiful. Back to a cutter. More paint. Cut fastball. Moss just sort of gave up on it and the movement just sort of continues to work back in towards the strike zone. Nice frame job there from Posey to get the, the call. Got two dreadlocks. Make it three now. On Italian American night here at the ballpark. Got it all covered, Mike. He's going to get the dreads in. Ball hit well by Molina. It'll be a base hit. Again, first ball swing. And so it's not something that the Cardinals were going to do the first time through. It's been pretty much their whole approach. Be ready early against Cueto. And they know him. They know him going back to when Cueto was a, a red, and they had some battles. Remember the brawl they had when Brandon Phillips got in the box and hit the shin guards he got here Molina he wasn't happy and Johnny kind of got up against the uh, screen involved in that brawl. If 
Johnny Peralta lined out sharply on the uh, leaping catch by Brandon Crawford his first time up. Pulls this one sharply down the line. Pagan trying to cut it. He can't. It rolls all the way to the wall. Yadier Molina will be held at third base. Cardinals have runners at second and third. Boy, Eduardo Nunez tried to make a play. Once he saw that Molina had put the anchor down at third base, Crawford on the cutoff, I mean, he's thinking this play is going home, so he's thinking home. He's not thinking cutoff. Once it gets by Pagan, the green light was given, and right there, Nunez could not handle the high throw. And watch, I mean, it's tough for a catcher to score from first base this time of the year. Chris Maloney coaching at third base for Jose Okendo, normally their first base coach, relocating to third. He got down the line nicely, like Tim Flannery always did, and kept waving him. Back up the middle with a base set here by Grichik. Molina will score to tie the game. Well, they are going after Johnny early, Mike, as you've been noting all night. They are ambushing him on the first pitch. Well, I, I, that's not a bad thing. I mean, it just means you go to a corner early in the count. And that's what he tried to do there, though. A little hang time with that changeup. Three straight hits, single, double, single. And the Giants have uh, given back the 2 0 lead. Well, this may be what they're talking about right here. You know? hey, listen, they're swinging at that first pitch. And if you're pitching against a team aggressive early in the count like that, you just think corner on the first pitch. You don't think challenge. Because normally a, a guy who's got as many movements with the baseball that Cueto does, he'll throw a first pitch curveball, slider, change. That's how he mixes it up. But the location, that's going to be the pitch that he bites off the biggest chunk of the strike zone. When you start having a team get aggressive on a first pitch, in your mind, if you're Cueto, you, see, you think, I'm going to throw it like it's an 0-1 count or a 1-2 pitch. I'm going to throw something on the corner. Let him hit my pitch. Johnny misses high to Colton Wong, who came into the game one for ten against Cueto. Rounded out to Belt with Cueto covering his first time. He has big time power. And the walk off home run he hit against Sergio Romo to win game two of the 2014 National League Championship Series at Bush. Johnny falls behind two and zero. Oh. Peralta at third, Richick at first, Adam Wainwright, the pitcher, is on deck. Popped it up. Joe Panic going out. Hunter Pence coming in. Panic will make the catch. That's a big out. Runner stay put. more out to get the at bat when you head back to the dugout as the hitter that fell with a runner at third base and less than two outs you just want to take a bite out of your batting gloves you're so angry Wainwright trying to pick up Colton Wong here Mike he's uh, not your typical hitting pitcher and he is 14 RBIs on the year for a pitcher. Well, they are swinging at that first pitch tonight. Even Wainwright rifles one straight back foul. He was on it too. He way. was. Cardinals are four for six tonight on the first pitch. Four of their five hits have come on the first pitch. Just a little bit inside. A lot of pitches this inning. It's up to 50 for the game now. He's still ahead of where he should be. You want to be 60 or less after the fourth if you're Cueto. 
He had an eight pitch, one, two, three, first. As Wainwright rolls it foul, one and two. Actually, not bad by any, huh? No, really not. Wainwright popped up his first time in Nunez. Big difference the last couple of innings is that it did a lot of stress pitches. Yeah. He was three up, three down, first two innings, and he had a leadoff double in the third. A lot of pitches, 18, they scored a run, then here with one out, they get a runner on and three straight hits, so every pitch has been stressful. Just off the plate, two and two. This is the fourth time Johnny Cueto is pitching against Adam Wainwright. The only time he beat him was on June the 3rd when Cueto won at Bush. It's out of the inning. The Cardinals do tie the game. We go to the bottom of the fourth. Giants and Cardinals tied at two. before tonight's game on the field as Jake Peavy is this year's Roberto Clemente Giants nominee and the one and only Hall of Famer Orlando Cepeda was able to present the award to Jake and Orlando what makes this so much more special is Roberto Clemente was a dear friend of yours. Yes. <clears throat> Me and Roberto uh, 1955 he brought me to the state. I went to the Giant Manor Lakes and Roberto went to Pittsburgh. So we grew up together. And uh, it's a special thing for Roberto, for Jack, and for myself. It's a huge honor to be able to present Jack with Roberto's trophy. It's, it's such a special award because it's not recognizing only what you do on the field, but what you do off the field and what you do in your community. Jake Peavy, a great example of that. And of course, it's coming from the example that Roberto Clemente set. What, what did that mean to you to watch what he was able to do for the community? It's amazing, you know, uh, I believe that players should do more. They should be involved with the community because, uh, you know, you can't help so many people by just being there, you know. Especially today, what the use is so distortion. You know. Well, it's a it's wonderful to always speak with a Hall of Famer, Orlando Cepeda, and we're real proud of Jake Peavy. Greg, Mike, let's get it back to you. Thank you, Amy, and thank you to Cha Cha. That is a prestigious award and well deserved for Jake as Brandon Bell takes a strike to open the uh, 
bottom of the fourth. Mike, they've been handing out this award annually in baseball since we lost the great uh, Roberto Clemente. And the very first winner of the award was Willie Mays back in 1971. Orlando Cepeda two days from now will be celebrating his 79th birthday mm. and he's got great stories about Clemente and uh, I mean both Cepeda and Clemente from Puerto Rico yeah the only Puerto Rican players to get into the Hall of Fame and it's great when he starts talking boy, he gets he starts talking in low tones a lot of respect a lot of reverence in his voice when he's talking about the great Clemente. I remember 2004, Mike, when the Giants went to San Juan to play the then Montreal Expos in the series. And it's a happy birthday to Gaylord Perry, who turned 78 today. As you mentioned, uh, Chacho will turn 79 in a couple of days, and their statues are right next to each other when you drive into the players' lot at Second and King. And that was a great trip to San Juan back in, in 04. And Orlando Cepeda led the way there when the Giants went there to play. And Felipe was the manager. Two two pitch Wainwright to belt who struck out his first time up huh? heads up wow, right off the uh, railing in front of the Cardinal dugout. Wainwright moving over on the rubber now working from the far first base side of the rubber. 2 2 pitch. Just missed. I always felt you should start the game in the middle of the of the rubber and you can make adjustments left or right depending on where your arm release is that day. But you don't see that very often. Most guys get in one spot, stay in one spot, and never move. I kind of wonder if he's moved over there to the pitch to this left-handed hitter. Well, I, I think. More so, it is to adjust to the type of release that he has. I mean, that's uh, you know, going and moving on the rubber from hitter to hitter is you're flirting with, you know, release to us to the strike zone. That's not something that you normally see guys do. Did see that the very first time Eric Gagne got to the big leagues, and he would throw off the first base side to left-handers and, right, yeah. and the third base side to, to right-handers. Ted Lilly, when he first got to the big leagues. Did the same thing. Ida Blue did that. He would adjust hitter to hitter. You gotta have a great feel for it. How do you move around that much on the rubber? You really do. The rubber is your starting block. It's one of the biggest mistakes that young little leaguers make when they start pitching. They, they don't know how to use the rubber. Walked him. Good, Good plate appearance by Brandon Bell. A lot of kids you see in the little leagues, they'll pitch on top of the rubber, but you have to think of the rubber as a starting block, like starting blocks in a track meet. You want to push off the front of it to the big league level and see guys dig a hole so they can get a little bigger piece of the slab that they can push off of. Here's Brandon Crawford. He drew a walk himself. Seventy nine RBIs on the year. The breakout year last year really has followed up on it this year. Wainwright really has a lot of belief in his command and he's not afraid to pitch behind the count. And the reason. He doesn't mind pitching one oh two oh three one counts is that he'll throw anything at any time. He's never backed into a. Situation where he has to give into a pitch the hitter's looking for. Four game series, the only two pitchers that will not appear this weekend are Madison Bumgarner and Carlos Martinez, arguably, has been the Cardinals' best starter all year, Mike. But uh, I think both managers are quite happy to have the, the guys they have out there tonight Johnny Cueto and the longtime Cardinal ace Adam Wainwright. Crawford pops it up foul or back into the field of play now. Third baseman coming in and it'll be caught by Peralta. 
one away as we go back to our Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area studios for an update. Finally, Summerty Ahmed is scoring off a of rich hill. And it's good news there. Three to one Giants. Well, they were being uh, swept here at home by San Diego. The Dodgers took two out of three at Yankee Stadium. So the lead went back from three up to five. Giants would like to get that down to four. And yeah, shoots one foul. Eduardo Nunez has really been a shot in the arm. He's a good player. Giants fans get a chance to watch this guy play every day. You start to appreciate what he could do with the glove, with the bat. He gives you a great combination of power and speed and spectacular defense over at third base. Good to have him back in the lineup after missing the Padres series with the oblique injury. And he rifled a single to center. His first time up. Pulls this one off the glove of Peralta down the line. Brandon Moss will try to dig it out. Roberto Kelly will hell to hold Brandon Bell to third. Second and third, one out for the Giants. Nunez comes through again. That was a bullet. Well, the Gamer Babes liked it. Oh, yeah. And one guy hanging out with the Gamer Babes, Mike. Yeah, he's the driver. <laughs> Take a look at the pitch to Eduardo Nunez. Two seam fastball down and in. And he just goes down and inside outs it. And watch Peralta. I mean, he didn't have time to get the ball, his glove up high enough to catch it. That's how quickly that ball got on Peralta. Well, his swing looks strong tonight. He's hit the ball hard both times up to center his first time, and that one he pulled. That wasn't a hanger either. That was right where Wainwright wanted to throw it. After a conference, they have elected to walk Denard Span intentionally, even though Denard is really struggling. They'll pass him and go after Cueto. John failed to get the bunt down. His last time up struck out as he called off strike three. But as we've noted many times, when you do walk the uh, eighth hitter, Johnny Cueto, Mike, uh, Cueto really does bear down with the runners on base. He puts the ball in play. I mean, that's the thing. The other thing, too, about Johnny Cueto, you know, get a chance to really see a lot of it, but he can run. Just four RBIs on the year. He'll walk down and uh, find out exactly what Roberto Kelly wants him to do here. Well, I don't, I don't think that the squeeze is, is, is any is very remote possibility of that going on. Number one, he's not that great of a bunter. Number two, you don't have great speed with Bell at third base. And the bases are loaded. It would be a force out. Yeah, I mean, it's. He's got to swing the bat. He's got to put it in play. And they are coming in. Matt Carpenter, the first baseman, is in. Johnny Peralta at third is in. Swings away and takes it to right field. Piscotti will throw home. Belt will score. And Johnny Cueto comes up with a sacrifice fly to give the Giants the lead back. Get it done right there. Fifth RBI of the year for Cueto. You know, we see him go to right field a lot, too. He will put it in play when he needs to. Well, Piscotti's got a great arm, but this backs him up. He gets zero momentum coming into the play. And for Bell, an easy score. There's the Bell high cut. And if you try and pull it, you have a chance of hitting into a double play. He stays inside it. And it winds up being an easy score. Not only did Belt score, but Cueto also moved Eduardo Nunez from second to third. They're going to appeal to play at third. Wainwright will step off now. Did Belt leave early? No. Hey, 
So Belt a nice plate appearance to lead off the inning. He drew the walk and then came around to score. Giants back on top 3 2. Diamondbacks leading the Dodgers 4 to 1 batting in the bottom of the sixth. And that's not playing tonight. Third time through the giant batting order now for Wainwright. Angel Pagan grounded out to first and flied out to center. Giants have speed everywhere. Span at first. Nunez at third. Pagan the batter. Up the middle and a base hit. Nunez will score to make it four to two. Big hit there from Angel Pagan. Or the two out. Knocks are such a bone crusher. Now, in the mind of Wainwright, he's thinking, all right, I can minimize the damage, get it out here. When you get a base hit like Pagan did, and you now extend that lead, this is a bone crusher. And look at the location of the mistake up. When Wainwright has been hurt tonight, it has been upstairs, bell higher above. And Pagan taking advantage of it, keeping that momentum in the Giants' dugout. Now, here's Joe Panic. And it bounced out to second, popped out to short. Pulls this one. Carpenter will feed to Wainwright, but the Giants strike for a couple of runs. Sack fly from Johnny Cueto and a two out knock from Angel Pagan. 4 2 Giants after four. September the 15th 1963 Forbes Field in Pittsburgh bottom of the eighth all through a Lou Brothers played in the Giants outfield simultaneously Maddie was in left Felipe in center Jesus was in right incredible huh and, and three completely different style players Felipe was the power hitter Matty Alou was the speedster and he was a good bunner and he was an average hitter slappy I mean he was and then Jesus I mean he was he was a, a, a hitter that used the whole field didn't have as much power but a great breaking ball hitter and he wound up having a nice career as a, as a pinch hitter I mean he mm -hmm. really prolonged his career I played against him. Look at that. Arizona's exploded on the Dodgers, leading 7 to 1 now. And there's Matt Carpenter popping one to left center. Angel Pagan will come over and put it away, one away in the top of the fifth. You mentioned there's some bad blood between those two uh, franchises going back years, Mike. Diamondbacks and uh, Dodgers they, they had an interesting situation when the Rich Hill was batting and uh, he went down the line screaming. And the uh, 
Dugouts empty, the bullpen's empty, nothing really happened, but I'd like to know what set that off. Right hander Archie Bradley's on the hill for the D-backs. Hill was yelling at him. And both guys are just sort of mild manner. They're completely out of character for those two guys to be in the center of uh, the controversy. Nice two pitch sequence there from Johnny Cueto. Cut on the outside corner, come back with two seam movement on the inside corner. Bang, bang, quick 0 2. Ted Jerko takes the pitch just off the plate, one and two. And it's a four game series, Dodgers in Arizona before the Dodgers host the Giants. Cueto twisted a little bit on that delivery. Is he okay? Yeah, he looks like he's fine. He Grimace when he made the release. He's just upset he didn't make a better pitch. Had a one-two can threw a fastball up there. It was a pretty easy take for Jerko. And he wants another shot with that fastball. Quick pitch, just missed. So 0-2 to a 3-2. Started it off with a little cutter in the outside corner, and now it's been four fastballs in a row. Jerko pops it up. Who wants it? Brandon Crawford will take charge. Two away. We were talking about the bad blood between the Dodgers and Diamondbacks. How about July the 24th and 88, Mikey? You know this deal. Will Clark with the hard slide. And it's on. Jose Akendo, Ozzy Smith. Now, well, Candy Maldonado was the MVP of this one. Ooh. Tony Pena gets involved. But that was every year's Harry Spillman and Bill Hammer. Fahey. Where were you in that? <laughs> Sneak attack. <him. laughs> That's a quick inning for Johnny Cueto. A shutdown top of the fifth after the Giants scored two in the bottom of the fourth. Four two Giants. Celebration presented by Coors Light. You can join us in parking lot A across from AT&T from 3 to 6 p.m. for an afternoon of free music and festivities. For more information, go to sfgiants.com slash Fiesta Gigantes. It'll be a 6.05 first pitch, game three of this four-game series. Buster Posey leads it off here in the bottom of the fifth. He's two for two tonight against Wayne Wright. So where were you in 88 when that uh, Will Clark, Ozzie Smith brawl? You weren't there, huh? DL back in San Francisco. You he, wanted a piece of the Cardinals though, didn't you? Well, I, you know what? I mean, like the Cardinals, I, I was raised the Cubs organization. And every year as a player, 17 years, whether it be in rookie league or the big league level, the team that I was on had a fight with the Cardinals. 
<laughs> every year. Every year. I mean, <laughs> and I, I have nothing but respect for their for their organization. Posey hits one well to right center field. Gr uh, Grichik back to the warning track. Does not get it. It's off the base of the wall. And Buster Posey will get in with his third hit of the night. A leadoff double here in the fifth inning. Boy, another mistake up. And this is like a little lazy cutter. And he goes out and Buster Posey backspins this thing, takes on the middle of the field. And this is what the Giants are waiting for to get his carry back. I mean, he's had a long home run drought, the longest of his career. And here he does something that's not an easy thing to do, and that's hit it over the head of Grichik. Career double number 189 to pass Bobby Bonds. He is three for three tonight. And more importantly, Wainwright right back in the stretch. Stress inning in the fourth. He gave up a couple runs. He's trying to go out there and have a clean inning. But boom, just like that, Posey puts him in the stretch and puts himself in scoring position. Hunter Pence, who home run his first time up for the Giants' first two runs. Now Wainwright pitching for the strikeout here. This is a pure strikeout situation. Runner at second base, nobody out. You're down two runs. I mean, you're not gonna give in. He's got an open base here, so I wouldn't expect him to do a whole lot of challenging over the middle of the play. But in his mind, he's thinking strikeout. Balls behind Pence, three and out. And those are good takes. They're not easy takes with Wainwright. He's got late movement. You think a lot of what you're going to get from him is going to be in the strike zone. And by the time you get after it, put a swing on it, it's gone. It'll sink below the zone. It'll cut or break away from you. Green light him here, three and zero. Yes, he got a good pitch to hit. That would be confirmed. Fly ball to right. Piscotty is there. Buster will tag and go to third. Piscotty has a cannon. It's a double play. Oh, no, he's safe. Got the ball. Johnny Peralta dropped the ball. The ball beat Posey easily. What a throw by Piscotti from right field. Oh, he's got a cannon. And here he's not worried about a back runner. He doesn't have to worry about a cutoff man. He's got momentum coming into the ball. And watch unload a pure strike. How is he not out? Peralta just dropped it. That much time. He could have cradled it with both hands. He puts the tag on and hits the knee of Posey and kicks right out. Did he have the tag long enough? I wonder if Matheny want to look at that. I, I doubt it. Did he ever secure the ball? He did not. Well, that's a big mistake. Uh, Johnny Peralta has been a shortstop most of his career playing at third tonight. So Belt now with the infield in. And this is the situation that a plague ran a belt all year under a third less than two outs. The right knee hits the ball. He just can't keep it in the glove. So now you have to take advantage of that. Wayne Wright pitching for the strikeout. Infield in. The well, belt's just got a barrel one here. Lost by Molina. That's a nice block right there. I don't think any Cardinal pitcher. In the tenure of Yadi Molina has ever feared throwing a ball to dirt with a runner at third base when he's been back to attention and such a great blocker. You don't get eight glo gold gloves if you're not a good blocker, and he just showed that he still has it as a blocker. That was a nice play. Which is up. Well, Yachty, last year you remember he uh, shredded that ligament in his left hand late in the season. He had two different surgeries in the offseason, and he was not framing real well to begin the year, but he's deeper in the year, Mike. He's gotten better and better. Two and two now to Brandon Belt. Well, everything has been slow and everything has gone into him. And the one pitch that Wainwright will save against a left handed hitter is that two seam fastball that he'll try and take out in the inside corner.
Giants have pulled the shorts or the Cardinals have pulled the shortstop Jerko over to the right side of the infield now with two strikes. Going back down the dirt. And blocked by Yachty. That was the target. He wanted to try and bounce that curveball at home plate. The big curveball he has it has always been a good strikeout pitch for him against lefties. You actually try and hit home plate. Yep. So a nice take there from Brandon Belt's perspective. Line right to the second baseman Colton Wall. Got jammed. Two outs. Mike Matheny, who ended his career as a giant in 05 and 06, was uh, saying before the game, Mike, when I visited him, he caught Matt Cain's very first start in the major leagues. Oh, he was a joy to watch behind the plate. He's one of the best big man receivers I ever saw. He won a uh, tremendous ball blocker. And four gold gloves himself. Now here's Brandon Crawford. And Matheny, I mean, we always anticipated that he would be a manager of the big league someday. And, and he has done an outstanding job as a skipper of the Cardinals. David Bell. He's to his coach. right. Another one of our favorites wore the Giants uniform well. And he someday will be a manager. David only a Giant for one year, but he won the Willie Mack Award in 02. Scored a pretty big run that year, as I recall. Yes, he did. David, the offseason, lives up in Santa Rosa with his wife and family. Brandon Crawford up the middle, and the Giants are going to waste a leadoff double from Buster Posey. They do not score as Wainwright wiggles out of it at the end of five. Still 4 2 Giants. Playoff game tonight, and there are a limited number of 2016 postseason tickets available for possible Giants games to be played here at AT&T. You can register at sfgiants.com forward slash postseason for the opportunity to purchase tickets to each round. Registrants will be selected at random. So check it out, sfgiants.com forward slash postseason to register. And right now, the Giants are the number one wild card. That's are a half game back, and these St. Louis Cardinals are. A game back of the Giants. Joe Panic was positioned perfectly out in shallow right, and the shift hits Brandon Moss for one out. That was not an easy play by Joe Panic. Well, we say we make it our fourth right choice. That's how good it was. 
just a top spin one hop bullet that comes up and uh, just kind of wrestles it down with bent elbows. Yeah, wow. I got it. Little web, Jim. Thank you very much. Such a different play for a second baseman to make to field the ground ball on the grass out, as you say, around his feet, and then have to make the throw what? from that spot. Just unusual. Clint Kuiper, who was a second baseman, an outstanding one, said, "When you play that far out in the outfield, when you get hops, they're different than when you get them on dirt." Play over on radio tonight with Jeremy F.L. Greg Papa sitting in for Dwayne. Johnny Cueto against Yadier Molina. Blows one right by him. Yeah, he with a smile back to Johnny. Every once in a while, Cueto will just reach back and throw the high fastball by you. Now he gives you the shake. Well, we've seen 95 and at times even velocities above that. And you always see him at two strike counts when he reaches back. I mean, he he throws at a speed that he can command. He's not a max effort guy. I mean, you know, he's going to pitch for a long time, and when he's done, he's going to teach pitching for a long time. I think he's had an impact on the game. I'm seeing more quick pitches from not just giant pitchers and Derek Law all around baseball. I'm seeing guys quick pitch. Strike three called. Yadier Molina not happy with the home plate umpire Doug Eddings. Now he thought it was low, but that's Eddings' zone. I mean, you're going to get low strikes from Doug Eddings. This is not anything that hasn't been called a strike tonight. It was change up on the Ooh. outside part of the plate. Ooh. Nice frame job from Posey. Just kind of bring it up and cheat a little bit. Give him a look. See ya. Now he's saying, I want that pitch all night when I'm behind the plate. And he is yapping from the giant or from the uh, Cardinal dugout. You see, he's looking at Laz Diaz at the first base umpire. You're yapping at a, at a, a home plate umpire. The guy who's watching is the guy is the umpire at first base. Yeah. Pitch effects had that low and outside. Ground ball right to Brandon Crawford, and that'll be a one-two. Oh, he pulled him off the bag, and Belte to slap the tag on Peralta, but they still get the out. Another one-two-three-eight pitch inning for Johnny. We go to the bottom of the six. Still four-two Giants. SN Bay Area is brought to you by Toyota, the full-line automaker with the longest-lasting vehicles in America. Toyota, let's go places by Kelly Moore Paints, celebrating 70 years as your neighborhood paint store. By Xfinity, X1 from Xfinity will change the way you experience TV. 
four two Giants as they come to bat here in the bottom of the sixth Hunter Pence with a two run homer in the bottom of the first Johnny Cueto with a sack fly and then Angel Pagan with a two out knock to bring in a second run in the fourth. And I'm Wayne Wright has not gotten Eduardo Nunez out tonight he's hit the ball hard both times up single to center and he rifled the double down the left field line. Interesting when you bat Nunez Mike number seven in Spain eight and they could easily be one two in a batting order they got they got speed right behind it each other here at the bottom of the order in front of Cueto. Uh, you know, the Giants really do have three guys that could lead off. Pagan Span and Nunez. And three guys that have let off a lot in their careers and Nunez was the leadoff hitter for the Twins went down to the knee after that swing and miss one and two. <laughs> It'll put a smile on his face. This guy's as easy going as anybody. Great the clubhouse. I mean that smile lights up a lot. He just loves playing baseball. Coming into the game tonight, Nunez has never faced Adam Wainwright before. And vice versa. Great smile. Huh? That's the one we're talking about. Maybe we'll talk to Amy after the game tonight and flash that smile on the post game. Well, I mean, you know, the years being around this game and the guys you really come to respect are the guys that when they get to the ballpark, you get the feeling that there's no place on this planet that, that they would rather be than right there. Completely at home, the clubhouse and the dugout on the field, on the plane, every part of, the, of baseball life they love. Rifles another one. This one's just foul. Boy, he's had some good swings tonight. Well, he's not fooled on the off speed stuff. I mean, keeps his hands back. This guy brought his glove. Nice play. He's flashing the Eduardo Nunez smile. <laughs> Caps this one. Carpenter will feed close at first. Nice play there by Adam Wainwright to just beat Eduardo Nunez. One away as we go downstairs and check in with Amy. All right, guys, no doubt about it. It is a critical series for the Giants. And Bruce Bochy talked about how his boys need to kick it into gear and play with a sense of urgency. We're going to make it our Geico quote this evening. He said, we're at that time. You've got to grind it out. Find a way to get through this. We've got to recover. This team has done a good job at that. They know what's at stake. It's a tough group. They've played under pressure like no other team. Greg? And 17 to go, Amy, including tonight. 10 of the 17 will be against the Cardinals. And the Dodgers four game series here against St. Louis then three to L.A. on Monday and then of course the last three of the year against the Dodgers. So I know they've been struggling for a long long time. They're 20 and 35 Mike but if they play solid baseball this weekend and early next week they, they can be right back into the uh, wild card. Uh, right now they are in front but they could really grab a, a stranglehold on that and make up some ground on the, on the Dodgers. Well, and, and they feel that they can do that. I mean, that's the important thing. You have to have the belief that you're good enough to do it. I mean that's the bottom line. But when you've had the late season success that they've had I mean, you have a stubbornness about you this time of year. And it's a base hit the other way for Denard Spann. And here's the three teams that are battling it's basically uh, two of these three will make it one will not. The Mets have on paper and you hate to do this Mike because uh, we just saw the Giants get swept at home by San Diego. The Mets have the easiest schedule. They have the Twins Braves Phillies Marlins and Phillies again as we mentioned the Giants have 10 of the 17 including these weekend games with the Cardinals against either the uh, Dodgers or Cardinals. But you never know. And the Mets may struggle down the stretch which they have done in years past of course they did win the National League pennant last year and I'm not buying that thing about a week schedule I, I never have I mean, this time of year you may play a contending team like the Cubs and they may be resting guys getting ready for the playoffs you may see a starting pitcher for only five innings 
Uh, whereas if you're playing against Minnesota like the Mets are going to play come tomorrow Minnesota this is their playoff to be able to play against a contending team trying to ruin the party. So you're going to get everybody's a number one effort. No win comes easy this time of year. I, I don't care what the team's record is coming into the series. It means nothing. Giants just got swept at home by San Diego, Mike. You can't take any team you, for granted. Did you sense anything in that San Diego series that, that was a, a lackadaisical effort from the Padres' part? Of course not. Cueto pops it up. It'll be caught by Molina. So Johnny did have a sacrifice fly his last time up, but twice wrapping around that, he's been unable to get bunched down. Now those are mistakes that you know you have to be fundamentally sound this time of year. And that's an opportunity where you could use that out to put a runner in scoring position. Top of the order and Angel Pagan. Adam Wainwright is approaching 100 pitches. Pagan. That's a look at Colton Wong's range to make that close. Pagan will reach. But Colton Wong, who has the highest zone rating of any second baseman in Major League Baseball, which tells you about his range. He made a heck of a play to make that close. And I think what's even more remarkable than the range is how he was able to get a throw off from this angle. Look at he's going towards the bullpen. Wow. Three sixties and still throws a strike over to first base. I mean only Pagan speed is the difference maker. If it's a slow runner he gets the out. That's great athleticism. That's four two speed coming down the line from from Angel Pagan. But the throw and the footwork. That's just. It's big league baseball. Mike. Yeah, that's the fun big to leagues watch. right there. Wow. So we're going to have a double switch here. Zach Duke is going to uh, come into the game from Mike Matheny. The veteran left hander as Adam Wainwright is done for tonight. When it's time for a change, think speedy oil change and auto service. Your oil change, tune up, and repairs expert. We'll be back. Telecast is presented by authority of the San Francisco Giants. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of San Francisco Baseball Associates, LLC. So Adam Wainwright is done tonight, and the veteran at left-hander, former Pittsburgh Pirate and Washington National, Cincinnati Red, Milwaukee Brewer, and last year a Chicago White Sox, Mike Zach Duke is in. Uh, and this is what he has done. He's had a great year, 1.96 ERA and 72 appearances. Low 90s fastball, good changeup. And he's got like a, a low three quarter release. Two types of breaking ball, curveball, slider. On the double switch, Greg Garcia comes in. He goes to third base. He'll hit the ninth spot in the lineup and do up third at the top of the seventh. So Johnny Peralta is done for the night.
This guy drops down sidearm right. He's tough going uh, left on left. Adam Wainwright, five and two thirds, nine hits and three walks. Yeah, 12 base runners in five and two thirds. That's unusual for Wainwright. That's a high whip. There's a strike, one and two. Mike Matheny has nobody up in the bullpen, so if Tanner can wiggle his way on base here, looks like Duke will face Posey. Yanni with the backhand, two and two. Panic is a guy who has good control of the bat head. And with all the break of balls that you see with Duke and off speed stuff that you see, I mean, you think the opposite way. You think left field if you're hitting off from the left side. And there's a hole on the left side of the infield for Panic. He just missed that yeah, one. Fought that one off. Two and two. He had good balance in his lower body on that swing. 31 consecutive plate appearances without a strikeout. That's the long that longest active streak in the National League. And that's just an example of what we're talking about, how he does have good back control. And there you see the little slight pull as to how they're playing defensively against Panic, and it does provide an opportunity to the left side. Fights that one off. That may fall in left field. Coming in to make the catch is Brandon Moss. Well, he's a first baseman converted to the outfield does not have great speed, but he just saved the Cardinals a run there and he gets Wayne right out of the inning 4 2 still Giants after six. For the seventh time for our Toyota game summary, brought to you by your local Toyota dealer. Randall Gritchick will lead it off here in the seventh against Johnny. He's had a good game, two for two. Adam Wainwright after out after five and two thirds. Hunter Pence, a two run homer to get the scoring started in the bottom of the first. And Adam Wainwright never to get Buster out tonight. A couple of singles and a double. Plato also a sacrifice fly. Angel Pagan, a two out base hit. And Cueto goes to work here in the seventh. Pitch total not that bad, Mike. He's at 72 pitches as he starts the seventh. It's very, very good. There's a ground ball to third. Nunez loads up. And he's playing the back end by Brandon Bell, and they shoot out Richick. First time they've gotten him out tonight. One away. Now here's Colton Wong. He was grounded out to first with Johnny covering and he popped out to Joe Panic at second. Quick pitch. 
you know what it does it is it it messes with a guy's sight. Hmm. Golden Wall right to Denard Spann has to go back and he'll make the catch that time he quick pitched him and then he paused after the quick pitch and all those little things that he does it messes with how a guy picks up the ball out of your hand and in doing that it affects the timing of the at bat it's very difficult to do he makes it look easy I, I don't know of anybody that has, has ever done it the way that he's done it well shimmy then he came forward but he's so consistent to be able to bring whatever motion he has back to that consistent release point back to the quick pitch and he controls both sides of the plate with six different pitches three different speed on every pitch I mean from my perspective I mean he's as good as it gets to analyze what he does because I think he just sort of creates it as he goes well, that's a good pitch right there he thought he had to cut her in this is Greg Garcia's first at bat of the night. Have you gotten any handle? Because I haven't watching every pitch he's thrown this year. When he's got a quick pitch and when he's not, and what no. pitch he's going to throw off the quick pitch and what's off the shimmy. There's nothing predictable about what he does, and I think that's the genius of what he does. It's just how he feels. And Buster doesn't know. No, he, he doesn't. Good pitch there. 2 2. Now he goes full. Top of the order and Matt Carpenter waiting as Johnny now starts to work through the Cardinal order for a fourth time. Greg Garcia the hitter at the grandson of Dave Garcia a really great baseball man. And the play. Really a guy who. Was a manager for Dwayne Kuyper and uh, had a lot to do with his development as he went to the Cleveland Indian. Organization. And anybody that comes around Dave Garcia. He affects you in a positive way, and here's his grandson. He's a good player. Strike three called. He freezes Dave's grandkid, and Cueto goes one, two, three in the bottom of the seventh. Posey Pence belt. Four, two, Giants. Middle of the seventh. For two Giants as they come to bat here in the bottom of the seventh. Hunter Pence a two run homer in the bottom of the first. Cueto gave up single runs in the third and fourth to tie the game. But Johnny with a sacrifice fly brought in the giant third run. And Angel Pagan with two outs brought in a second run that inning. That was in the uh, bottom of the fourth. And Cueto is just dealing here. Buster Posey will lead it off, followed by Hunter Pence and Brandon Belt. Buster three for three tonight. First time facing the left-hander Zach Duke. 
Couple of singles, Mike, and a double off of Wainwright. You know, inside out early on, throws it to right field. Then third base, he goes back up the middle. Again, location mistake for Wainwright. We saw him make a lot of pitches up in the uh, at the belt or above. And here, he takes a little cutter and he backspins it off the wall in center. Almost pumps it out of here. So a three for three night. If you do that against Adam Wainwright, I mean, you've had a good night. Do it against anybody who had a good night. But when you do it against an ace, it means a little more. And do it in game one of this weekend series, Mike. I'm into that. That's how big this series is. They all feel it on both sides of the field, in both dugouts, and both clubhouses. Playoff environment tonight and throughout the weekend. Mama Mia! What took you so long? It's her first game, and she's here on Italian Heritage Night. Oh, well, she picked a, a great night to come. Look at that. Bless her. Her first game tonight. Good luck. At least so far. Buster Posey is four for four tonight. Eleven for 57. My coming into the game in the night, he's got four knocks. Sixteen times his career, he's had a four-hit night. Second time he's had against the Cardinals. He's spraying the ball around the diamond too. Matt Bowman, the right-hander for the Cardinals, heating up. Interesting that Mike Matheny would leave the left-hander Zach Duke in against these righties. Yeah, I think he could do that with Duke because of his experience as a starter. He's equipped to get guys out both sides of the plate. The point you make, though. I mean, here you are in September, and they've got like. 12 guys down there who are right handed so it's not like you, you have to yeah save Duke but he's letting him go in the heart of the lineup. I never heard the name Zach Duke I think of Flem years ago he could not say his name we called him like Dak Zook or something he, he couldn't get it right. It's up the middle and they will get the out at second base on the force out there. Buster Posey is retired nicely done by Jerko and Colton Wong. So Hunter Pence reaches on the fielder's choice, one away. Well, nice range from Jerko. And Wong had to readjust. And just kind of a little <laughs> shuttle, just glove flip over to Wong, who manages to stay in contact with the bag. They didn't have a lot of speed on the play with Posey coming at him, so they knew they had a chance to hang in there. That was creative. Yes, it was. Colton Wong is good. Mentioned earlier, Matt Adams not in the lineup, somewhat surprising tonight. And they started Peralta over at third. Also, Aledmus Diaz not in their lineup tonight. The Cuban, well, he was an all star at uh, midseason, took one of the spots away from Brandon Crawford. Then he uh, broke his thumb, got hit by a pitch by Andrew Kashner. So just came back the other night, hit a home run. I thought he would be in the lineup tonight, playing it short. But they got Jerko's got 26 home runs. They got a lot of. Middle infielders. They also have a lot of guys that can play different positions. It's a very versatile team. 2 0 pitch to Belt. There's a strike. Brandon Belt drew a leadoff walk in the fourth and came around to score in the tie breaking run in the sack fly by Cueto. He was also struck out and he lined out. With a runner at third and one out. Did not move the runner along. He pull it back there. Yes, he did. As Brian Onora, three balls and one strike to Belt.
And he takes a walk. Two on here as we go back to our CSN Bay Area studios for a update. Good news for Reed. Thank you, Ahmed. You know, the Giant deficit is down to four and a half in the National League West. Obviously, if they hold on tonight, it'll go down to four. And we'd like to get it down to three or two, maybe, by the time you roll into Dodger Stadium, like on Monday night. Crawford couldn't check it. Well, that would be the plan. But. You have to be careful not to let yourself get that far ahead of you. Right now, it's all about being in the moment. It's about playing good baseball, about being fundamentally sound, about having good situation with bats, about being able to minimize an inning if you're on the mound. Crawford lifting one to shallow center. Gritchick coming in will hang up long enough for him to get under to make the play. Two outs. Mike Matheny will go to the right hander Matt Bowman that will come in now after uh, Zach Duke gave him a pretty good outing got some tough righties out when it's time for a change thanks speedy oil change and auto service your oil change tune up and repairs expert. Series. We're back with you tomorrow on NBC Bay Area and the Giants Television Network for Game Two at seven o'clock Saturday. CSN Bay Area will have the game. We'll have Giants pregame live, starting at five thirty, and the first pitch will come your way at six o five tomorrow. It is Matt Moore against Luke Weaver, young guy with a good fastball and a changeup. And Saturday it'll be Jeff Samarja against the former Giant Mike Leak. Mike Matheny, also a former Giant, Mike gets back into his bullpen and brings in the uh, right-hander Matt Bowman. Take a look at the numbers. 53rd time that Bowman has come into a game. Two and five with a 3.86 ERA. He's got a fastball that goes low to midnight. He's good. Hard slider and a changeup. More sliders to righties, more changeups to lefties. But he'll throw everything to everybody. Eduardo Nunez swings through the first one. Yeah, I think he was sitting on a slider. And where'd that ball go? It just disappeared. I think he had a little. Word with himself. A little disappointed that he didn't do more with that location. That was a hanger. He's had a good night though. Rifle to single to center and a double to left. Scored a run off of Wainwright. He's two for three. Back in the giant lineup after missing the whole Padre series. By the way, talking to Mike Matheny, Mike before the game, Jaime Garcia is not going to pitch here on Sunday. He's going to throw the hard thrower, Alex Reyes. He will pitch on Sunday. Against Albert Suarez, Reyes will, will crank it up there close to 100 miles an hour. He'll start 
all right handers this weekend. Garcia will not start on Sunday. Nunez having a hard time here picking Bowman up. You know, Nunez wanted to know from Doug Eddings, the plate umpire, if he called that on a swing or if he called it on a location strike. Inside. And yeah, he jumps outside. Nunez grounds it up the middle. Colton Wong cranked it. Bases are loaded. This time he could not make the play. Well, he knew it, that there was nobody at second base with Jerko the shortstop backing up the play, and then there's nobody at second, so the play was going to have to go to first. And with Nunez's speed, it had to be a quick exchange and a good throw, and he just was not in position. To make it the ball comes up to him high in the backhand hits him low in the glove so really he had no play anywhere even if he catches it with Nunez speed I don't think he's going to have a chance and with pants running to 30 and no chance there. Well the bases are loaded for Denard Spain. Spain dropping down the batting order tonight but he's been up with. Guys on base seemingly all night. Does have one hit. He was intentionally walked right ahead of Cueto sacrifice fly in the fourth. He can blow this game open. Big at bat here. Ball one. Well, with the reputation that the Cardinals have coming back late in the ball game, this is a big at bat right here for the Giants to try and add on. Off the plate, two and zero. Oh. Fastball intake, fastball away take. Hunter Pence at third, Brandon Belt at second, Eduardo Nunez after his third hit of the night at first. And they're playing a studded set in the outfield. They're playing very shallow. That is down the line, a base hit. Penn scores. Roberto Kelly waving belt in. He will score. Two run double for Spain. It's six to two Giants. Well, and it has to feel good for Denard Spain. And that's the hit they've been looking for. The elusive swing of the bat that adds on late. Two seed fastball. He got into 2 0 count. He had the challenge. And Span sitting on the fastball looking for that location. And he winds up with a two RBI single. Yeah, the official scorer, Chris Thomas, will score that a single and two RBIs, not a double. He went to second on the throw, which is the right call. Belt comes in behind Pence. Well, you dropped him down in the order, Mike. He's had a couple of hits. You get Nunez back in the lineup tonight. He bangs out three hits. Johnny Cueto's moving all around the box. And he will. They retired here to end the inning, but Denard Span really struggling down in the batting order comes up with a huge two run single to make it 6 2 Giants after seven.
And with MLB.TV Premium, you can watch every out-of-market game live in HD. Go to MLB.TV, check it out. We swear by it, we live by it. It's all we do. Two thumbs up on it. Without question. Giants with three different crooked numbers tonight. Pence, the two-run homer in the bottom of the first. Cueto, a sack fly. Pagan, a two-out knock. But that was a big hit by Denard Spann. He needed that personally, Mike, and the baseball team really needed that to stretch the lead to 6-2. to two. Well, That's how you respond. If a manager takes you out of your normal spot in the lineup, the leadoff spot moves you down in the eighth spot. He hasn't hit in the eighth spot since his rookie year. That's how you respond with big hits like that, big at-bats. All right, top of the order now, and Matt Carpenter against Johnny Cueto. Carpenter 0 for 2 with a walk struck out his first time up and flied out to left in the fifth walked in between. Quito knows the Carpenter. He'll chase down below the strike zone. I mean, he hasn't thrown much upstairs. It's been all down below the movement falling out of the zone. Just missed in. And this is not the time here with a full run lead that you want to walk anybody to lead off an inning. Got one to hit. He drives it to center. Spain will get back though and put it away. One out here in the top of the eighth as we check in with Amy. All right, gentlemen. Well, the final episode of GMAG has been shot. It's in the can and it is ready for broadcast this Saturday, September 17th at 5 o'clock. It is jam packed, guys. We've got a feature on who else? Ben Scully, of course, in his last year of broadcasting. Jake Peavy's unique relationship with the Grateful Dead and Jeff Samarja's non traditional path to the majors. It's a good one. Don't miss it this Saturday at 5 o'clock on CSN Bay Area, guys. Yeah, quite a cross section there, Amy. Scully and TV and Samarja, Hunter Pence will put that run off the bat of Jed Jerko away. So a couple of quick outs here, Mike. Five pitches, two outs for Johnny Cueto. Now three of the four bats that Jerko has had tonight, it's been over after one pitch. And a word about Vince Scully. He announced this week that he, if the Dodgers do make the playoffs, he is not going to announce postseason baseball. So his last games, he, he does not travel anywhere except San Francisco. He will be here. For those final three games, so his legendary career will end here on uh, Sunday, October the second, here at AT&T Park. And he said, 80 years ago, he was a kid walking down the streets, and it was World Series time. Giants were playing the the, the Yankees. Yankees. Yeah. And he saw a score. It was a Chinese laundry, and then it had a ticker tape going across, and it was flashing the score. And that Giants got beat that day, like 18 to six. And that day, Vince Gillis said, "You know what? I'm going to root for the Giants." <laughs> He felt bad for him. The kind of guy he is. Piscotti will fly out, and that is another eight pitch inning. Cueto has had three eight pitch innings, so he's in line to pitch the ninth. We go to the bottom of the eighth. Six two Giants.
On Sunday, Sunday, the home of the Authentic 49ers. It's right here in CSN, in-depth 49er coverage every single night, the home of the official pre- and post-game shows of the team. Sunday to Sunday, right here on CSN, the uh, home of the Authentic 49ers fan. And join us early on Sunday morning. They'll be in Charlotte to take on Cam Newton and the uh, Carolina Panthers. 6-2. Giants as they come to bat in the bottom of the eighth when it's time for a change. Thanks, Speedy Oil Change and Auto Service, your oil change tune up and repair experts. Your pitcher now for the Cardinals will be Miguel Sokolovich. Sokolovich has a fastball. You'll see low to mid 90s, more lows than mids. He's got a, a slider and a, a changeup. And he is way high with his release. You see the strikeouts 13 in 12 innings. So the nine games that he has been in, he has made a nice impression. Sokolovich will face Angel Pagan, Joe Panic, and Buster Posey here in the bottom of the eight. Giants looking to tack on up six to two. Similar arm action to that of Derek Law. Eric Law back on the roster after being reactivated on his 26th birthday on Wednesday. Did pitch in the game late, so he's available. Now this one's a Johnny Cueto night, Mike. No activity in the giant bullpen. Why would you need it tonight the way Cueto is pitched? Well, this pitch count would dictate, hey, let him go out there in the ninth. He's earned it. So Brian Sabian and Bobby Evans a couple of innings ago Mike and uh, that's why you pay Johnny Cueto all those dollars to bring him here to pitch a game like this and to win a game like this Pagan to right field for Scotty will come over and put it away one out. Well you're right I mean you bring in a free agent and you want him to have the ability to match up against any ace to give you a chance to win. These kind of games late in the year a game you got to have. And he delivered. So far, you got to get three more outs. And he's got to go through the heart of the Cardinals order. Four, five, and six hitters. Although the six hitter is going to be a pinch hitter. Coyne was struck out six. He's allowed just one walk and five hits and a couple of runs. For you, my dear. So gallant. How's he going? Well, he dropped his hat. <laughs> Be careful. Or his glove. Strike two. Joe Panic is not enthusiastic about that call. Joe back up in the number two hole tonight. He's taken an 0 for four. He was robbed though his last time out by this guy Brandon Moss made a tremendous catch he'll get back and put it away. There was 0 for 5 two outs. Well this is what I want to see I mean Sokolovich's numbers against right handers and granted it's only nine appearances in 13 minutes but they have been dominant right he's hitting only 074 against them so Posey in a four for four night. Let's see how young uh, Miguel Sokolovich handles this challenge. Giants have 12 hits tonight and Buster has four of them. Three singles and a double. Takes this one to left field. And at last the Cardinals will get him out. He is four for five tonight. So we go to the ninth inning. Johnny Cueto will look to finish it off. Brandon Moss, Yadier Molina, and a pinch hitter. 6-2 Giants.
Actual will come your way right after Giants post game live tonight. Alan Smith and Dave Feldman will host with a giant clubhouse reaction. The latest on the Raiders and Las Vegas and Draymond Green appearing on the Conan O'Brien show. That's all coming up on Hyundai Sportsnet Central right after Giants post game live. Ahmed Farid, Sean Estes back in the studios to bring you that show. Some work to do here. Johnny Cueto with 90 pitches thrown will begin the night. And a swing and a miss going right after Brandon Moss, who was 0 for 3 tonight. Johnny trying for his fifth complete game of the year. Mike Madison Bumgarner has four to have two guys on your staff. And that total of complete games in this generation in baseball is impressive. Oh, well, it is. I mean, that's nine complete day off, days off for your bullpen, too. No two pitch. Throwing it as hard here in the ninth as he was in the first. Just a big time performance tonight. This guy, of course, uh, won game two of the World Series last year for the Royals, just missed inside. Johnny's next start would be Tuesday at Dodger Stadium against Rich Hill, who was beaten tonight by the Arizona Diamondbacks. Dodgers lost. Giants can cut the lead to four. Ninety five mile an hour fastball. I mean right on the hands too. Mm. His ninety fifth pitch of the night Mike he's throwing ninety five. Well, you know Brandon Moss is not an easy guy to jam either. He's a good middle and hitter. He's quick on that side of the plate and that really ran up the bat. Giants are. Over shifting on him in the infield. Crawford over on the right side, panic and shallow right. Swing and a miss. Johnny blew him away. 94. Reaching back. Some guys know where the finish line is and they run right through it. And Plato's one of those guys. Well, that's the reputation you want to have. But that's what we're talking about. Two strike velocity where he'll reach back and it'll get a little something extra on it. And when you've been hit. Establishing 90 91 in the eye of a hitter all night long, and all of a sudden you can reach back and go 94 95. That's like another pitch. Here's Yadier Molina, who was one for three with a single and a run scored. Matt Adams has moved into the on deck circle for Mike Matheny, the big, powerful left handed hitting first baseman to pinch hit. Well, they got some home run hitters on this team. Yachty pops it straight back up and out of play. Matt Holiday, by the way, Mike took a batting practice before the game. He's not quite ready to be activated. I don't think he'll appear on this series, but he, he should be back before it's over. Well, that's a tough bat to lose in your lineup. Hmm. But they still have plenty of power to save him. 207 home runs the Cardinals have hit this year, the most of the National League. Now he just a piece to stay alive at 0 and 2. Tried to elevate there. It was exactly. Where Posey wanted the high fastball. 95 miles per hour. Well, he's sniffing the barn right now. He wants to finish this. There's nobody even playing catch in the Giants' bullpen. And not one time has Cueto looked down there. No need. Quick pitch. Oh. Just missed. We have seen this pitch called a strike tonight. Just a bit outside. Look at him hold it here. Brown ball in the hole. Crawford plants, throws. Molina's out. What a play by Crawford. One out away. 
He knew Molina was running Mike and he had time to plant and then throw. And in somewhere in the sequence of the play when he was making the exchange he says to himself if you're going to miss miss low and he throws a perfect one hop strike to Brandon Belt. And he planted as much as he could but he still didn't he didn't have time to plant the momentum was taking him towards the hole. What a throw. That's a great play. Matt Adams look at Cueto. I think he's into it. Nets not playing tonight so if the Giants get this last out they'll take a one game lead over the Mets and they will take a two game lead over the Cardinals Dodgers lost a giant win and a lead uh, for the Dodgers and the West is down to four. Right was two and oh. He's also walking around going calm it down take your time enjoy this. He's going anywhere. I mean, that's a tendency when you get to the ninth inning. It does change your rhythm. You want to finish it so fast that you get quick. And here's experience talking right here. He's just going to slow it down, be in control. The Chicago Cubs lost their game tonight at home to Milwaukee. Uh, they're watching tonight. If the Giants get this last out, the Cubs will clinch the National League Central for the first time since 2008. And they have done it. The Cubbies are in the playoffs. Johnny Cueto throws his fifth complete game of the year. And this was a gem, Mike. This baseball team needed this tonight, and Johnny Cueto delivered. Given the, uh, the importance of, the, of, of how big this game was in the minds of the Giants, for him to come in here, match up against Wainwright, and go complete game and get this win in this all important four game series. That is huge, and it's what he's all about. Wonderful night for Johnny Cueto. Strikes out seven, walks only one, gives up five hits and two runs, and the Giants beat the Cardinals in game one of the showdown series by a score of six to two. Thanks for joining us, and stay tuned. He sure it's Giants postgame live with interviews, and the wrap will start right now.